Our team, our team. Uh, Holy Jaguar. Holy Jaguar. Yeah. Ball. Ready ball. Pardon? Our team, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our out. team's the one to watch out for. Sure. Yeah. sure. <laughs> no, I mean, Formula E is incredibly competitive. It, it, you know, it's, it is a really challenging motorsport championship to be in. Um, you know, we've got McLaren, Maserati. You see Maserati have really performed today. You know, despite her Mortara having an issue during free practice, he still went and qualified really well um, and, you know, put themselves in a good position. Um, but all of, the, all of the teams, even down this side of the, of the pit lane, all of them are fighting for the championship. We've got Porsche around right there as well. So absolutely everyone. arrive at the circuit the teams it will vary between teams but we normally for these slightly further away races will arrive on a Monday or Tuesday and that just gives us a bit of time to acclimatize get used to the time zone and then all of the teams get access to the garages for the same sort of time on Wednesday so that means it keeps it fair everyone has access to the garages and the first thing they're gonna start working on is setting up the garage infrastructure so from the out of, straight out of the box, the race is on to get your garage built and ready to go. The same team who deliver the race weekend in terms of the mechanics and the engineers, and the same ones who construct the garage. So it's important for us when we're taking into consideration our garage environment and how it builds, that we aren't tiring all the team out by having to construct all of these items. So we have to bear that in mind. 
But also, we're, we have to be considerate of the amount of freight we transport around. So we have a number of freight boxes. You can see one of them just peeking over the boarding at the back there with the yellow, uh, yellow cover on. So we have a number of these freight boxes that all of the equipment you see inside here, apart from the old fan and air conditioning unit, which we've got here, has to fit inside these freight boxes, including the cars. So again, we've got to take that into consideration. And we want to be considerate of the weight as well. So you see quite a lot of the components and, and rigs that we use are made of carbon fiber. So it's strong enough, but it's also very light. So we've got the garage construction. And then we'll get Energy we use during the race and from the region. 
So we've got to create a power train that's reliable, but also very efficient, and also our drivers have to be really on it when activating the engine. It's not automatic. Like we're off at high down the road, we take our foot off, we press the brakes, we automatic the engine. It's going to be more than the day in this car. The driver has to act. Not only they're using the foot brake with the front disc brakes, which only give us a portion of the brake, but also having to do that new jet acceleration. So it's quite a unique sensation coming back. The drivers have to adapt. So, we talked about the efficiency of that power train. So, it is a Jaguar power train. We've got two here, we also have two next door. So, the Envision cars are both powered by Jaguars. So, we, you know, of course, there's a number of rules that we have to apply with when we're designing and quick manufacturing these power trains. But that is where we have an opportunity, is again to look at how efficient we can make it and reliable. So, we've got a lot of very clever, talented mechanics engineers working back at the factory and also here at the racetrack. But we also have an opportunity to work with So partners, you know, they're great that they can support us and help us go racing, whether that's with funding, etc. But also it's incredibly important the, the technology, the innovation, the, 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 the thinking outside of the box that we can have access to going to the next best. For example, if we were to work with Dow um, or Astral, Dow can help us with particular materials on our powertrain to help us with energy management. So if we're you know, the idea is to get the engine from the back through the power train to the rear wheels as efficiently as possible. If along that journey we're losing energy through heat, you know, escaping out of somewhere on the power train unit um, that we don't want it to, we can speak to about a certain, uh, a certain composite or something that can help us with that. Cash job, with our fluids, again we can understand from the experts there, those who develop those fluids, what can we do in terms of you know, different viscosities, different volumes of oil, but that doesn't only stop there, we've got the of our focus, of the analytics, so we need to do So as I say, this is a very important data, not only the engine based here at the uh, race track, but also we have a number of engineers based back in the UK. Each team has like one mobile support network, and it's limited to only six people. Cameras set up in the, in the base back in the UK so they know we're going to keep them in there supporting. And there's data that we need to get back into it from them. So, again, helping us with that data, that's where TTS, with their expertise in that area as well. So, all of these have their role to play in ensuring we are optimized in every single way we can. And that's what it takes to win the formula. We have you know, uh, two minus meaning a bit more. Circularity. Yeah, of course. So, Castro, I mentioned already about being able to tap into the information on you know, what, what can we do specifically with those oils in terms of the viscosity, with the level, but also there's opportunities for sustainability. You know, we're always thinking about going out, racing, performing, but doing it in a way that we're conscious about you know, our like, what we're, you know, what we're, uh, how sustainable we're being. So something that we did quite recently working with Castro is our two lubricants in our power trains. But normally, traditionally with lubricants, you put them into the, the power train, you use them, and then you get rid of them. It's not very sustainable. But working with Castro, we've developed with them a, 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 a lubricant that can be removed from the power train, go through the process required to recycle it, and then put it back into our power train. Now, as us operating at that highest level, performance and, and in motorsport, you know, we need to make sure that that fluid is going to perform to our level. So having gone through that process and then done it in Monaco and it performed exactly as we needed it to in the race, no issue. So, you know, it's put us into a position where it's great, we're having no compromises and we can do something that is the same more great. And if it's good enough for us, of course we're going to be doing our own Jaguar in Monaco. It's good enough for us, absolutely good enough for you and your automotive. We're the first uh, lubricant player. Our qualifier, the technical, how, how they uh, supply for the job. What the part is qualified. Say again, sorry? Uh, uh, our technical, how you uh, you know, qualify, how we, how how we they qualify for the job. Uh, how we qualify for, for the race, yeah. So uh, Mitch came in 11th for qualifying. I think Sam was 16th or 17th he came. I just set the screen just then. So a bit of work to do. Like qualifying, you know, it's, it, as I mentioned at the beginning, incredibly competitive. 
Um, but it's, you know, we've still got the race, it's a long race. It's going to be a challenging race with these conditions. Uh, you know, we might have come you know, down in 10th and 16th, 17th, but the split between all the times is half a second, a quarter of a second, 25 of a second. So all of the drivers are incredibly competitive with each other. So during the race, we expect a lot of overtaking um, and opportunities for us to climb up those positions and hopefully get on the podium. So, is there any questions? So I can tell you a bit more about the car. So you probably noticed a few tyres stuck in the back. So we have a new tyre supplier this, this season. So um, and each team, each driver, gets three sets of tyres for a double header race okay, for each car. So it's up to us to see how we use the three sets of tyres, how we use them throughout the different sessions. So you can also do the practice and in qualifying, the cars pulling in, changing the tyres. And that's to allow them to, they're usually doing that to adjust the tyre range to the tyre So as the car goes out, they go around the track, the tyre they can then come back in, and then as soon as the tyre goes up, they go back out, and then, as I say, tyre will find that up to the tyre, and then set the tyre up geometry of the car is all set up. Wow. So these things on the floor, they yeah. will be leveled completely because of course the surface you come to you never know if they're exactly level. So they will make sure these um, blocks are completely level. The car will then be rested on them and they don't actually touch these are magnets. So yeah. they actually sit. Yeah, so to ensure that there's no anything built in here magnets. Yeah, so then they will use these bars to set the car up and have it perfectly aligned. Imagine when these drivers are putting their input in, it's so accurate. They can't even, you know, it's a good idea. 
So they'll take the steering wheel off, they'll put these bars on, they then use a level to ensure that everything is perfectly level on the car. They can then make their adjustments for the geometry, so that can be toe in, there can be camber, and they can put in different rods for the suspension stuffers, they can adjust ride heights, all knowing that they're going off a perfectly um, you know, level set yeah, of the car. Yeah, yeah, so he's adjusting yeah, on the suspension component how, there. Yeah, yeah. How long do you typically recharge the battery? So recharging it, um, so the, the battery is only fully depleted after the end of the race. So ah. at the end of the race, the battery is fully depleted okay. and we leave it depleted because that's how you have to transport batteries with a certain percentage yes. of battery. It has to be very low. So we leave it depleted. Travels will then arrive at the first race and Formula E will give us charging windows. So we have a charging cable that sits on the top, plugs into the back, the charger sits behind the wall there. It's enabled to charge it. It depends on if we can adjust the power of the charger. If we don't need to charge it quickly, if we need to lock energy to go, or lock energy to just charge it up, but it could take an hour. Also, we won't necessarily always be able to fill the battery as well. There's different sort of percentages that will fill the battery up and it's not hard to fill the battery up. I can't share exact figures because yeah, yeah, it's quite a yeah, strategy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we might not always fill the battery up completely because we might want to allow for. If you think of it, when you're regen, you're putting energy back into the battery. If you completely fill the battery, coming into the first corner, you try and regen, and the battery's full, you can't, it won't so have nowhere to fill. So, so you need to be able to allow. Season it. like this, you only charge once? Uh, you will top the, the whole battery day. up. No, no, you will top it up. So you'll go out for free oh. practice, use some energy, top it back up at the point, yeah. use some energy, top it back up for the race. Yeah. 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 So if it's a technical issue with the battery, that's WAE, that's not ours, the battery's provided to us, so that would be there, that we wouldn't get a penalty. If the battery has a malfunction because we messed with it because of our powertrain, then we would get into a penalty, yes. yes. So it's investigated by it. Uh, yeah. I see him uh, remove the suspension. Yes. And then new one. Yeah. He's picking new one. Wow. Yeah, he'll be making. Yeah. Did he take one of the rods out? Yeah. So he's probably adjusting. Yeah. The um, the stiffness. Yeah. The roll bar stiffness. Yeah, yeah. How? I didn't quite see. How? Uh, how my friend can apply to a job like? Uh, no. Oh yeah. What's the job? <laughs> how? How? <laughs> it's looking very appealing. Like yeah. Covered in sweat. Yeah. <laughs> it's really so, so, Yeah. I mean, of course. Uh, Jaguar TCS says racing. You know, um, there's you know, always looking opportunities, so he can apply. Yeah. And direct to us. And, and yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Chris. You're very welcome. Yeah, thank you. Everybody, so enjoy the race. Thank you. Enjoy the race. Alright, take care.